Uh, before the accident, I have a very wonderful life because I have a lot of friends and I have a beautiful family and I always play with them and I can go to, to feed the cows and I go to school with a lot of friends and we play together and we was very happy. Uh, that time it was in 1996 and I was 14 years old with my friend, my best friend Chun Chai. He also 14 years old. We are the best friend. Always we go to school together every day. But one day in 1996, uh, after we have lunch and we take the cows to the field and then I come back to ask my friend to go to school together. When we walk along, along the road, my friend, he saw the landmine and he want to take the landmine to give to the soldier because uh, on the road to my school, there is the place of the soldier they live in on, on that road. So he tried to pick the landmine to give them. Uh, after he take the landmine, and we walked together around 20 meters from the place that he took. The landmine was fell down from his hand. And the landmine was explored. And they pushed me and my friend around five meters from each other. And I looked to my friend. He was cut his leg. And he, he feel hurt and he sound as somebody to help. But for myself, I didn't feel hurt nothing because that time I didn't feel I get the accident. But after three hours, the injured is getting hurt, getting hurt, and the blood is coming out, coming out. And there are many people in my village, they come to help me and help my friend. And after that, they took me to, to the district hospital. And in that hospital, they didn't do nothing with my, with my accident because in the district hospital, it's, uh, it's nothing to do with the big operation. Mm -hmm. So they sent me to the hospital. I got accident. Uh, around one o'clock the noon and they sent me arrive in the district hospital around uh, 10 o'clock at night so it's very late it's not so far from the accident place it's around 40 kilometers from from my village to the city but the road is so bad so it takes very long then when we arrive in the hospital the doctor they try to keep my leg because that time my leg is, doesn't cut yet, but it break the bone. Mm -hmm. So they try to keep my leg for 10 days, but uh, the temperature in my body is always going up, going up. So they said they cannot keep my leg and they asked my mother, my father to cut, but they didn't want to, to cut because they didn't want my lies become their disabled, but he have, they have no choice, so they let the doctor cut. And during the cut, I have met uh, Herbaso Sanchez, and he took uh, the photo of, of the operation, and then he come to my, to my village to take the photo of my story also. I stay in hospital for three months and then we leave from the hospital and I lose my study for one year. Mm -hmm. So after one year the accident I continue my study and then the one organization called Jesuit uh, they asked me to live with them and they let me to go to school and I stayed with them around 10 years and I had finished my, my 
high school and now I still continue my university in, in information technology. It's uh, my second year this year. Uh, after the accident, uh, my life is like finish everything because after the accident, I my life is just stay in the house and I cannot do nothing. And even I go to school, even I go to work, I cannot do very well because it's very hard to walk and it it it's very hard to to work with the with the uh, rice field or going to school. Yes. In my country, there's the big war, 1975 till 1979. That time is the Pol Pot regime. It's the civil war. They kill the people. Any people, if they do, I don't know that time because I didn't burn yet. But the history said that they kill the people. Every people they kill, and then in 1999, the Vietnamese army they come to to help the the Cambodian people. Then that time they have a very big war, and they use the gun and they use the landmine. So that's why the landmine is still have until now. And after that. From 1979, they still use the landmine until uh, until 1993, and then in Cambodia we have a little bit peaceful in the country. So from that time, the civil people they got in charge every day of the landmine. And also that's why I have got in charge in 1996 because there is still many mines in the, in the ground. And until now, especially in the Thai border and especially in the border of Cambodia and Thai Cambodia and Laos Cambodia and Vietnam, there is a lot of uh, uh, mines still live. Yes. Uh, I just say that uh, the the disabled life is very difficult, so I don't want to see any more disabled or any more children get in charge of the landmine, because it was happened to me. I know what is the life of the disabled and what is the life of the children that they get cut their legs. So I just want to say. Uh, please help us with the clearing landmine and help us with the the help the handicap because in in country many country they have the, a lot of landmine victim they live very bad life so they need help so please help us to help the disabled and to clear the landmine. Yes. Soy una víctima de las minas antipersonas que fueron puestas por por la guerrilla o por la fuerza armada en la en la guerra del Salvador. Anteriormente mi vida, después que tuve el accidente, era una vida que llevaba... Trabajaba en la agricultura, estudiaba y, y trabajaba al mismo tiempo. Y como eran unas personas muy pobres, tenía que ir a trabajar lejos, a cortar café, a las fincas de, de un volcán de San Salvador. Y fue ahí como tuve la mala suerte de pisar una mina y perder mis dos piernas.
Me acuerdo que fue un 12 de diciembre que, por cierto, mañana estoy cumpliendo años de perder mis dos piernas, no de, de, de nacido. Y recuerdo que fue un día muy duro para mí. Solo recordarlo me da, pone muy helado, como dice, porque vivir una vida, tener sus dos piernas a no tenerla, yo le digo, fue muy duro para mí cuando me vi que la explosión que, y no tener mis dos piernas, pensé en ese momento que la vida había terminado. Pero mi familia me ha apoyado mucho, ha estado pendiente siempre, moralmente, porque mi familia es bastante pobre, pero eso me ha ayudado mucho, el apoyo moral y que siga adelante, que la vida no ha terminado y yo me siento feliz por, con mi familia y hoy más con mi familia, que tengo cuatro hijos, mucho, mucho mejor y, y eso son lo que le da fuerza a uno a seguir adelante. Pero no es fácil para una persona mutilada. Claro, la vida me cambió demasiado porque ya una persona mutilada ya se le dificulta todo para conseguir un trabajo para moverse de un lado a otro, para, para poderse mantener. Y otra cosa, lo que más me costó quizás fue conseguir unas prótesis para poder caminar, porque tenía que poder hacerlo y al principio me, las primeras prótesis que tuve me, me tocó comprarlas, mi familia me ayudó a comprarlas y luego después que terminó la guerra en El Salvador. Tanto civiles, militares como de la guerrilla presionaron mucho al gobierno para que se hiciera cargo de las víctimas de la guerra, que hiciera un fondo para poderle ayudar, ya sea en sillas de ruedas, muletas, prótesis a, la, a las víctimas. Y bueno, gracias a eso, hoy últimamente hemos podido tener unas prótesis, pero no, no ha sido fácil, ya una vida muy distinta a la de antes. Yo en aquel tiempo estaba muy pequeño cuando comenzó la guerra, tenía ocho años, yo viví todita la guerra en El Salvador, huyendo de un lado a otro, y pienso que la guerra quizás fue, se dio por la injusticia, como siempre dice, el que tiene más quiere aprovechar al más pequeño y pienso que la guerra comenzó por eso, que había mucha injusticia y porque fue una guerra fría, que entre la misma gente del mismo país no fue una guerra entre un país y otro. Y pienso que fue eso, que por la injusticia se dio. El mensaje que les daría es que luchemos para que en todos los países haya una democracia, que haya paz y que no permitan que hayan más guerras, que las guerras lo que trae es más pobreza a un país. Yo no he visto en, en ningún país que la guerra le deje más riqueza, ¿no? que siempre dejan pobreza y lo que deja son muchas víctimas y que ya no sigan fabricando minas, que, y no solo minas, ahí la, las armas también provocan mucha, mucha persona o muere o queda discapacitada. Y, y lo que me gustaría es que ya no hubieran guerras, que los países que, que siguen fabricando minas, que ya no lo hicieran, que se pusieran un poco la mano en la conciencia. Y que yo sé que es un negocio que tienen, pero Lastimosamente, quien sufre las consecuencias siempre son los países más pobres y, la, y las víctimas somos los más pobres siempre. Y que, bueno, y que este proyecto de vidas minadas, que me gustaría que sirviera mucho para que se den cuenta la, la mayoría de personas que no, no saben nada de que una guerra, que es un problema muy grave. Sí, bueno, sí. Me gustaría, lo que más me gustaría es que hubiera paz en el mundo. Antes del accidente, 
éramos uma, 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 quase uma família de... Éramos sete, vivíamos com... Porque em, do, em 92 morreu meu pai durante a guerra, 92. E fiquei, ficamos com mamã. Sim, e minha mãe é doméstica e camponesa e nós ajudávamos a ela na machamba, sim. E, e a, eu com minha irmã mais, mais pequena a, ao mato procurar lenha para a nossa mãe, ajudarmos a nossa mãe para poder cozinhar. Sim, e logo lá no mato não sabíamos que havia minas pelo campo, lá no mato. E eu pisei a mina e explodiu. Minha irmã ficou um mal na cara e no estômago e eu fiquei sem perna. E ia passando um carro perto que nos levou para o hospital de, de Boane, nove quilômetros. Depois de Boane, nos levaram para o hospital central, mais, mais 40 quilômetros. E é lá onde ficamos quase seis meses. E, minha irmã morreu lá no hospital, sim. Com um acidente, agora não posso... Não posso jogar futebol, basquetebol, não posso correr com meus filhos, com irmãos, sobrinhos, primos e... Nem posso ir ao campo com a minha mãe, ajudar na machamba, nem, nem apanhar lenha. Eu posso só estudar. Isso não sei porque eu era mais pequena. Não sei. Que, que parassem de fabricar minas antepessoais, que as minas podem matar em pouco tempo ou deixar a pessoa sem mão, sem pernas como eu, ou sem, sem visão, sem olhos. Sim. Que parassem de... de fabricá-las. It was very hard because uh, I was living in the basement for the four years because of the war. And so it was very hard. We didn't have the power, we didn't have electricity, we didn't have water. Always we need to go out and take water and come back again, sleep in the basement. It was very, very hard. And every day you can hear somebody dying. After the war, I, I would just go out and 18 March 1996, I was go near my neighborhood to play the football with my friends. And on the way, I was going first and I was see something on the floor. floor and I was touched with my right arm and mine exploded. 
Then my friends took me to the hospital, took me to one village and called somebody with a car to pick me. I was totally destroyed. And the car brought me to the hospital. I stayed there, I don't know, maybe 15 days. 4 of April 1996, I moved to Italy. Then I stayed there for six or seven months. But before Hervasio was told the picture, maybe the second day of my accident. And I was in Italy six or seven months, I don't remember. And I was come back, Hervasio, I meet them, I meet Hervasio again. And he explained me that preparing for one book, uh, with us, Minadas, in 1997, I was came to Madrid first time, in Spain, and then I meet. We meet a lot of cities in Spain, and I meet uh, people who want to help me to continue my my surgeries on my face. On my face, and I go every year to Barcelona to have surgery and. 97, 98, 99, to, to 2005. Now is, uh, I get married before maybe <laughs> three weeks. <laughs> Tomorrow is going to be three weeks, Wednesday. I get married, I will start to, to live normally like other people. Uh, this past 10 years is very hard in my life because I travel all around the world to have surgery in my operation. I was in New York eight months, I was in Spain every year, I was in Italy every two years in Italy also. And it's very hard. I won't forget that. And now I want to live normally. If I have also hip hop band and music is uh, something experiment. You know, I have band. I have a lot of friends. I work with uh, computers, also software, hardware, and networking, and internet, everything. And the uh, happen was uh, the war was happened because of uh, the act Yugoslavia. It was, uh, I don't know, somebody wanted to, to be separate. And Slovenia goes first out. They didn't have any more. He took his land and put the soldiers and she stopped, she don't want to, to have a war. And Serbian people was first attack Croatian people in Vukovar, 1991. Then the war started in Sarajevo, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, 1992. And then we was uh, we was uh, inside in Sarajevo, but on the mountain was Serbian people. We was in the one hall, you know. They was shoot us for four years. They. Nobody can believe that, that we are alive there. More, more than a million of grenades for four years they shot at on us in Sarajevo. But we was in the basement all the time and a lot of soldiers died also. And in 1995, in November, they signed contracts of peace. I would like, if, if that's possible, to, to close all fabric in the world who, who make the bullets, guns, and weapons, and mines, also mines, to close, just to close. Then we'll start to the, the, mine, the mines, online. because in my country they have a lot of mines. But in Sarajevo, 
is for example clean now but a lot of on the mountains of the some places on the villages they have a lot of lot of mass and that that mass that is down the floor and for 20 for 50 years can somebody get hurt my message is just Easy. Close all fabrics and don't sell mines anymore. 